the last time you were on WWE TV, you were celebrating with The Undertaker. And uh, I was hoping you'd take me to the day, uh, you know, from beginning to end. Uh, what was your role in it? Or, or was there any other plans going on? And you've got to tell me about the after party as well. Well, you know, we got there the same day that we, the COVID was really bad at the time, which it still is. So Vince had rented out like three or four floors of the hotel. And to be on those floors, you had to be COVID tested. So there was nobody allowed on any of the floors. There's no fans, there's no nothing. It's just us because of the COVID. And so we, uh, Taker had to do some type, of, I think he did something with Snoop Dogg or something that day. He had to do some type of podcast with Snoop. So we were waiting for him to show up and he showed up about 10 o'clock to the bar. And we had started a little early without him, but uh, by the time three, four o'clock rolled up in the morning, we had drank four bottles of Jack Daniels and probably, I don't know how many pints of beer. <laughs> uh, it was like old times. It was old times and the fact that me and Taker had to put them all to bed like we used to. So we had to walk them all the rooms, make sure to get to the rooms. And then uh, it was a good night. The next day at the building, we were all, whew, even Taker, everybody was feeling it a little bit. Taker's wife had even told me that Mark had told her, just like old times, man, just me and Papa, and a lot of people call me Papa. He said, me and Papa were putting people to sleep. But um, good day. I don't really understand what they had us do there. That didn't make much sense to me. But, you know, sometimes you're just better off doing what you're told. Uh, what they did for him with us just was kind of, I don't know if you've seen it. Did you see it? Yeah. I mean, they had, had us all, we all got an entrance, all got an intro, and then it went to a B-roll, and then we were all gone. So I don't know what sense that made. I just did. We have a group called BSK that Taker's a part of, and uh, we had our salute and celebration the night before. So what they did on TV didn't matter. Uh, do you know, I actually spoke to Savio Vega a couple of months ago and I asked him the same question and I was like, who was last man standing? And he was just like, oh, I don't know, man. I don't want to say. Which sort of, to me, sounded like it definitely wasn't him. I don't remember putting Savio to bed. I, I know he was drunk, but I don't, I don't, you know. Me and Taker are always the last man standing. I don't let nobody fool you. <laughs> uh, and Savio, Savio don't drink like we drink. But he was a trooper, man. He's a good dude. You know, he's part of BSK. Did you ever get into the uh, gargling of the Jack thing? I, I don't know if that was a good yes, thing. Yes, of course. Of course. Uh, we gargled on the uh, podcast yesterday and told people why. People don't know who started that. That was Kurt Henning. Uh, what, that what, was a Kurt Henning thing. What was the uh, What was the reason for it? Was it, was it so he could prove yeah, that you... Uh... We couldn't... We we couldn't prove we, we were talking about that yesterday and, and like why did we do it I don't know it was just he made you gargle it and, and it just became a thing gargle your jack you know so I, I why I don't know I always Maybe had a theory make sure you drink it I, I have no idea why you would gargle it but it was it became a thing yeah that was exactly that was exactly what my theory was so you could prove that you didn't do the old Ric Flair you know over the shoulder yeah. kind of thing yeah, which. After, you know, 10, 15 shots, you know, you're prone to do. <laughs> well, yeah, two for me. I've, I've actually done that as well after a second one. I'm just like, it, it's gone. I, 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 like I told everybody yesterday, I don't drink, but it doesn't mean that I can't drink. I just, I don't choose to drink. But, whew, you know, I'm a big cannabis smoker. I'm much more into that than I am drinking. I, I might even get to the smoking in a bit, but there's one question I've got to ask you. And actually, because you brought up the Broken School sessions, I think it is. Um, the Undertaker was on not too long ago, and he told the story where you and he almost came to blows uh, while you think you were traveling in Memphis, and it was a bit of a snowy evening. Now, we've heard his version of the story. I'd love yours. It's just like he said. Only thing I don't agree with him on is when um, I took over the car after he drove for, it's a three hour drive from Nashville to Memphis, Memphis to Nashville. Uh, it was, like he said, it was a blizzard outside, man. And uh, I was just determined to drive my car. And he tried to talk me out of it, said, dude, he calls me Bear. He's like, Bear, 
don't. You don't know how to drive in the snow. You live in California. You know, never, I never drove in the snow in my life, you know. But I had to drive. And I'm the type of dude, especially back then, that you couldn't tell me no. If you told me no, and then I was determined to do it. So I'm like, no, it's my car. I'm going to drive. So it was me, him, dirty white boy, dirty white girl. And um, her name was Kim, and he was Tony Anthony. His real name was Tony Anthony. And so uh, I, I took over the car. Taker says that I got like 10 feet. And I put the car into a spin and put us into a ditch. I disagree. I think I went at least 10 yards. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, but we, we didn't almost come to blows on that. The, the, the one that we, we went to blows on was when we were fighting over one of these hats. I don't know if you heard that. No, one. I've never heard of that one. Go ahead, please. That was on the first, on the first uh, Stone Cold podcast with him. He talked about me and him getting into a fight, a real fight over a hat. And then on the second one, he told the uh, snow story, I think, or vice versa, one of the two. Uh, so, so what was the hat? Was it just he wanted that style of hat first? Uh, I had, I've been wearing these hats forever. And uh, I had bought one that was a Stetson. It was more of a riverboat, you know, instead of Godfather style, it was riverboat. It was flat on the top. And, uh, we used to give each other, I mean, he'd give me this Rolex watch. I'd give him this, he'd give me that. We'd always give it back. So one, I said, he tried on my hat and I'm like, bro, it looks better on you than me. And he's like, no, nah, I ain't taking the hat. And I'm like, no, you're going to take the hat. And he's like, no, I'm not going to take the hat. So he goes in the bathroom, locks the door, he's going to the bathroom. And I, I mean, you really have to go on the podcast and, and see it because it's, you know, it's animated. They put stuff to it. And so I basically broke down the door and we start fighting and we were fighting in front of a lot of people, you know? And, uh, well, before that, when I broke down the door, he's like, Oh yeah, he took the door and put his head through the door. And then he went outside through the, the door. We were on the second floor, like down to the parking lot. And then he came back in. That's when I attacked him. <laughs> and but the moral to the story, and I'm like I said, you really have to look it up. It's it's a pretty good story. The moral to the story is he took the hat, <laughs> and he even says it at the you know end. He goes, I I, I took the hat though. <laughs> I've got to, I'm going to ask you a couple more quick Undertaker questions first. And one thing that came to light a few years ago was the cucumber thing. But please explain the cucumber thing with Undertaker. That's just so odd to me. Um, all I know about it. This is uh, all I know about it. He don't like cucumbers. He don't want them on his food. He don't like to see them. He don't like to touch them. I never ribbed him about it. Um, it was never a big deal. More people make a big deal out of it than me. I don't know if the story is somebody ribbed him or something, but it's, I've known him since 88, 1988. And he just, for some reason, he don't like cucumbers. But like I said, I never ribbed him, like put cucumbers on his bed or any of that stuff. I never did that. So if there's a story to it, I don't know it. I know that he does not like cucumbers. <laughs> well, clearly a good friend as well, if you're not going to... Uh, I'll tell you what, I'm clearly somebody who knows who the judge is usually going to be on Wrestler's Court as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 man. Yeah. They don't have that anymore, I don't think. No. Uh, do, you, uh, do you ever remember getting taken to Wrestler's Court? Or do you remember any good stories back in the day of uh, someone who was tried for something? I took D'Lo to Wrestler's Court one time. Right. Um, this is over cannabis. We were in Chicago. and D'Lo was from that area. And he's like, dude, when we go to Chicago, don't worry about it. I got you covered. I'm going to get you the fire. It's going to be the best you ever. I'm like, okay, man. So I tell my people, no, 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 don't worry about it. I'm covered. So long story short, D'Lo comes to my room with the worst looking. It looked like a bag of weeds. And so, because it was maybe 12 o'clock at night, I couldn't get any that night, and I need it. And so, the, at TV, I was going to take him to court for misrepresenting good weed. And so, he settled out of court with me, because he knew Taker was going to put it to him. And uh, he settled out of court with me. But, dude, there was a lot of wrestling court stories. Um, there, it was a big thing back in the late 80s and early 90s. I don't remember them all, but there, there was, dude, there was a lot of them. It was a weekly thing. And the thing that was cool about it, there was no office people allowed. If you weren't a wrestler, you weren't allowed in. 